My very first recollection of getting involved with language is um, I signed up for the Certificate of Immersion Teaching Program at St. Thomas University. I completed that, and after that, then I was involved in uh, teaching some of the university courses for that course I graduated from. Then we had to teach other people how to teach language, so I was involved in teaching adults at that time. And then I taught at South Devon Elementary. I taught there kindergarten to grade five for six years, maybe, after Christine Solis died. Oh, okay. I took yeah. over for her. And then I left there, and I've been teaching. Then I went to Chief Harold at St. Mary's, and I've, I've been teaching there for, I think I've got six, seven years there as well. When I was there, though, I was only teaching the K3, K4 kids, yeah. students, because they've already got a language teacher there that does the other grades, right? So, And then... Um, I taught some adult classes there as well for parents who wanted to take language while I was there. I didn't do that very long because the interest kind of started dwindling, so I just stopped doing it. And I've worked on other projects like with the language. We've made uh, CDs. I don't know if you've seen them. They're called... Um, they've got books with them too, storybooks and uh, CDs for Say It First. It's a Say It First program. I did some work on um, with uh, Jeff Bear on the Samoguan series on um, APTN. So there's, there's some, some of that translation there that uh, I worked with Henrietta Black and Victor and Alan and all them. So I had a little part in that. Right now, we're working on curriculum for two-year-olds. Okay. So yeah, there's a little committee of us. There's only five people on the committee and we meet once a month and we're developing like songs and uh, rhymes and stuff like that, translating those kinds of things, and then we're going to put out put them out right out on the website so that people can go right in and learn them and teach mm -hmm. them. How would you define education from an indigenous perspective? Indigenous education, yeah. To me, Indigenous education should be designed as a holistic approach, like you're going to be including language and culture and all the things that's needed so that our children will learn about us, about themselves, and they'll feel good about themselves. Like when you're at a meeting or something and, um, and you hear somebody speak Maliseet, like you automatically connect to that person. And I find our kids aren't connected today. They, they, they've lost that because they don't have language. So I think that's really important that you include language in the culture so they have a good, good sense of self. They know who they are and where they came from and feel proud. What is your vision for Indigenous education over the next 10 years? For the next 10 years? Well, it looks to me like, uh, like today that there seems to be a lot of money out there now to uh, revitalize our language, for one thing. So I would like to see that next 10 years for that to grow each year because I think our language it is um, we're losing it every day and we're losing our elders our speakers and we're not going to have very many resource people if we don't do something drastic with it and I'm a firm believer of immersion this core program thing doesn't work I mean it's it's similar to how I was taught French when I went to school mm -hmm. I can tell you what a door is and a window today but that's basically it Mm -hmm. And I think that's how we're approaching our language, and it doesn't work. You might, they might learn a few things, and I, you know, people say, well, it's better than nothing, and it is. But myself, I think you've got to immerse the kids. But that's a, a really big task because we don't have the uh, curriculum developed to do that kind of thing. And we're lacking in a lot of teachers to be able to teach it too. So there's lots of, lots of work to be done if you go that route, but I feel that that's the route you've got to go. Because, I mean, when I think about how I learned it, I was immersed in it. That's how I learned it. That's how I, my mother spoke to me, my grandparents. We were just talking the other night. I used to, uh, my aunt used to own a store on the reserve there, and uh, she used to get me to sell newspapers. And I remember walking around the community, never heard of any English. And I would have been like maybe 10, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. There wasn't any English around that. Anywhere I, everywhere I walked with those papers and stuff, I mean, totally different now. But anyways, I, I'm a really, real, um, a believer in going the immersion route.
That's the way you got to do it. And teaching them, like with this two-year-old program we're, we're working on, I think that's a good thing to do, too. The sooner you can get that language to the kids, you know, the younger, the better. Aside from funding, what information, materials, or resources uh, do you think is needed to achieve that vision? Well, we are very fragmented, the people that work in the, in the language uh, I think we got to get together as a whole and work together as a common goal to produce uh, resources and stuff where so everybody can use them. But we're all like, there's a little group here doing something, a little group doing here doing something, and nobody's sharing anything. Mm -hmm. And we're all kind of like reinventing the wheel, which is such a waste of time. So you got to get together as, as a whole and have that common goal and work together, mm -hmm. and that's not happening. And then we, we get into the uh, problem of... Uh, whose writing system is the best like that just makes me totally sick. I'm sorry. They've been fighting about that for 25, 30 years. Who really cares how you write it? Yeah. Write it the way you want to write it. Yeah. Just get it out there. Like, But we've got some strong people with, you know, this is the way, this is the right way. And, this. and as long as you have that too, we're spinning our, spinning our wheels. Yeah. So I just think we've got to quit arguing about that. And just do the work that needs to be done. But well, I mean, there's a lot needs to be done, a lot. But I think we need, I don't know, we need a committee or something where, uh, an organized committee where they can bring everybody together and meet on a regular basis and work at what we need to work instead of working in little groups and uh, not sharing anything. Because I think anybody who teaches language is always in the same position. They have no resources. They start from a blank piece of paper, which is what I had two years ago. And I was just telling Jen, I said, I'm just going through my files that I've been working. I just retired in June, so I had lots of stuff. So I've been going through all my files and all the stuff I've accumulated and everything, but I'm passing a lot of stuff on to the teacher. It's Chief Harold, so it doesn't, doesn't go um, unused. But we need, we need a lot of resources. People resources and like books and stuff and and really when you think about today all the um, the computers and everything now that we have we can use to make things easier, that's encouraging, and Ron like Ron does his online program that's something yeah. all these little things it's something.